Today's video is all about input lag. I went into both Warzone 1 Caldera uh, and Warzone 2.0 Almazra and tested a um, bunch of different controllers. So I have an Xbox uh, Elite Series 2 controller. I have an original uh, Xbox One controller. I have a PlayStation 5 controller. I did this both overclocked and regular. Um, I also have uh, the mouse and keyboard that I tested. So I have the Logitech um, G Pro X Superlight. And then I also have a brand new Wu Ting 60HE. So if you know anything about keyboards, that's kind of like the god of gaming keyboards right now. And I'll go over that more in depth as we go through the video. Um, but there's been a lot of rumors in Warzone 2.0 that specifically mouse and keyboard input uh, has a lot of added latency compared to Warzone 1. So that was my whole point of my testing was I wanted to figure out if that was actually true, compare Warzone 1 to Warzone 2. And on top of that, just compare all these inputs. But without any more talking, let's just jump into it and we will see what the results were. So I want to show you guys how I actually tested this real quickly. It seems pretty crude, but it actually works pretty consistently. And the results were really uh, repeatable between uh, different tests and things like that. So basically what I do is I use a high speed camera and I just record myself hitting whatever key or hitting the thumbstick or the trigger or whatever I'm trying to test. Um, through this testing, I actually also tested the stick and the trigger because uh, I feel like it's important to see if there's any input lag difference between those two inputs on the same controller. Most of the tests you see will be um, from NVIDIA LDAT, which is a great system, but I really like the way I did it here because it also includes any sort of like unknown kind of like wiggle room. So like if the, if the, if the trigger doesn't actuate until like halfway down, if it doesn't actually activate the switch until like halfway down or something, that kind of thing will be included in this test because it's actually just me hitting the thing. And you can see when I first start pressing the trigger compared to when it fires. So I think that's still important information. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty crude, but it works. So I just go frame by frame on the high speed footage. So it'll probably be hard for you to see because it's a little small. Um, but you can see my fingers about to hit the stick. And right there, that's the first frame where the stick moves. So that's where I start counting. So that's one frame. And then I just look for the first frame where there's movement on the screen. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven. So seventh frame is the first frame I see any movement on the screen. Um, so this, this is 240 FPS recording. Um, so it's just, you know, four milliseconds times uh, those seven frames to get the, the amount of time it took for my input to reach the screen, which again, I think is more important than theoretical things that you can see online. And then same thing here with the triggers. So I did the same thing for all the different controllers. Basically look for the first frame where the trigger moves. So it moves right there, you can see. So that's the first frame. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you can start to see the bullet appearing in that frame. So that'd be six frames. Um, from any sort of motion on the, the controller's uh, trigger to the actual firing of the bullet on the screen. So that's how I did all of this. Did that for all these different controllers, the mouse, the keyboard, and I did 10 tests a piece. So it took a lot, a lot of time. So if you appreciate the work I put into this, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And also, if you want to see more of this kind of testing, I have a couple other controllers. I have a Thrustmaster controller. Um, I have a PS4 Scuff that I'll have access to pretty soon. And I also have a bunch of different keyboard and mice that I can test as well. So if you want to see that, um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because you'll get notified for it. Let me know in the comments if you do want to see it. Um, but yeah, let's get back into the actual results. All right, it's not the prettiest spreadsheet in the world, but it's effective. So um, basically this whole first set of tests was Warzone Caldera. So this is on Warzone 1. Uh, I did a set of wired tests and then I actually decided not to do wireless tests because the whole point of this was really to see initially the difference between Warzone 1 and Warzone 2. Um, not to see wired versus wireless. Um, but let me know again in the comments if you want to see all these tests redone on Bluetooth. Um, these were all on PC as well. I don't have the consoles to test on. If I did, I would do that, but I just don't own consoles, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, this is all on PC. I controlled all the variables I could. I made sure I did everything exactly the same. Um, tried to match up the GPU load even between Warzone 1 and Warzone 2 because GPU load can really change input lag a lot. I made, all, made sure all the settings were the same. NVIDIA Reflex was identical. I tried to make everything as controlled as possible for these tests. So going through these results, um, this is frames at 240 FPS. So this isn't milliseconds. At the end, I'll have them converted to milliseconds, but you can see uh, we've got the G Pro wireless mouse. This is the mouse I was talking about earlier. 
I had it in wireless mode and then the results were weird in wireless mode. So I wanted to test it wired as well to make sure that's what, not what it was. So that's what this column is. We've got the, the Wu Ting 60 HE, which is the god of keyboards. Um, the reason for that is it's completely analog and the software that comes with it uh, allows you to do some really cool things. So on most keyboards, when you press a key down, there's a certain point at which it will actuate. There's a mechanical switch in there that will actuate at some point. Um, with this thing, the every key is analog, so it can detect how far it's pressed down at any given point throughout the keystroke. Um, and that means that, one, you can move slower if you want to, like a controller, um, because you can only press the key down a little bit and you move a little bit slower. Um, you can also set the actuation point with up to like 0 .1, 0 0.1 millimeter accuracy. So you can say, I want the actuation point all the way at the top if I want the least input lag possible, because as soon as I press the key, even if it's only 0 0.1 millimeter into the stroke, it's going to actuate the key according to the computer. Um, the other really cool thing is for games like Overwatch that have really quick acceleration. I mean, it works for Call of Duty too, but there's just more of a transitional acceleration time when you change direction in Call of Duty. Um, is that when you let off the key at any point, you can have it normally, like I said, on a physical actuating switch, it would have to get back to the point where the switch unactuates as you're lifting the key up with this, because it's analog, it can detect when you change direction. So no matter where you are in the keystroke, as soon as it changes direction, you can have it let off that keystroke, which basically makes your motion just way more snappy than any keyboard I've ever used. So that's why it's like, it's like one of the first keyboards in a very, very long time that actually gives you a bit of a competitive advantage in uh, in video games. So that's super cool. So that's what this keyboard is. Um, pretty much the best there is in a lot of ways right now. Then I've got the Xbox One. Um, I have firing and moving, so that's what you saw. It's not moving, it was aiming. So I hit the right stick. That's what the moving column is. Uh, and I looked for a change in the screen. Firing is hitting the trigger and looking for uh, any sort of indication that the weapon is firing. Uh, Xbox Elite Series 2. PS5, PS5 overclock. So I've run these 10 tests. You can look at them if you want, um, but the average and standard deviation is down below. Uh, average is the average number of frames of the 10 tests, and then standard deviation is obviously the standard deviation of those 10 tests. Standard deviation, if you don't know what that is, it basically measures how much uh, variance there is from test to test. Um, so a higher standard deviation, I think, is actually a really bad thing for uh, these input devices because even if it's a little more laggy if it's exactly you know eight frames even if it's a little bit more frames than the other controllers or the other input devices then at least you know when it's going to happen for sure so you can time your shots just right but there's also standard deviation just from variance in testing and uh, things that are uncontrollable so standard deviation wasn't a super good measure throughout this um, but it is I still think something to look at somewhat so looking at the average um, you can see right off the bat, the mouse, both wired and wireless, was almost identical, 7.5 and 7.8 frames, uh, which is pretty bad compared to the rest of these. So the Wu-Ting 60HG keyboard was 4.8 average frames from hitting the key to input, which is really, really good. Uh, I've got this conditional formatted so you can see which ones are going to be better right off the bat. Uh, Xbox One was basically identical between firing and moving or firing and aiming, so right stick versus thumbstick. Uh, about six frames, which was kind of decent. It was actually one of the better results for the controllers. Elite Series 2 was interestingly much, much worse on the stick. Um, and my dead zones were identical on all these. Just so you know, I want to clarify again, I tried to standardize everything between all these tests. So the dead zones were the same, but for some reason, um, when firing here, the the right stick or the, the right trigger on the Xbox Elite Series 2 was much slower to actually. Um, get the shot to the computer, basically. It took nine frames, which was the worst out of all these tests. Uh, moving was 5.7, just like the uh, the regular Xbox One controller. And then we got the PS5, PS5 overclock. Uh, PS5 by itself did pretty well, 6.9 on firing, 5.4 on moving. Um, basically, when you overclock the PS5 controller, it goes from having a 250 hertz polling rate to a 1000 hertz polling rate, and if you think about that, that's taking it from a little over or exactly four milliseconds uh, of delay on average to one millisecond. So you'd expect a a basically one frame at 240 FPS difference or like three milliseconds. Um, so you can see that's actually exactly what I got, which I was really happy about because that meant that my testing was pretty, uh, pretty consistent and pretty accurate, most likely. Um, so it was about when I overclocked it, it was a little more than one frame faster on firing and a little more than one frame faster on moving. Um, so 
you can see clearly the PS5 with overclock was easily the winner of all of these, including the mouse and keyboard. And mouse was actually one of the worst for um, time to fire. All right, so the exact same tests were repeated in Warzone 2.0. Um, and I found very consistent results. So we'll compare them directly in a second, but just quickly to go through this, mouse 7.7, .7, if you remember, it was like 7.5 or something in Warzone 1. Wu-Ting 60HE 4.7, again, about the same. Um, Xbox One, very close at six and a half, seven frames. Elite Series 2, again, was slower on the trigger, um, but not quite as bad in Warzone 2. So that tells me that it's probably just a little bit of error in the tests there, but it is it is still worse. So I do think there's a consistent trend where the Elite Series 2 trigger, for some reason, is not as fast to actually send it to the computer that it's firing compared to anything else on this list, which is not a good thing. Uh, PS5, again, 6.7, 5.4, and then we saw about a half frame reduction, um, which is about what you would expect again. Uh, and again, PS5 overclock was the, the king of the controllers for sure, um, and even better than the mouse and a little bit worse than the Wu-Ting 60HE in Warzone 2. I think this is about as fast as it can get. 4.7, 4.9. I think that's about as low input lag as you can possibly have, uh, at least on my PC. All right, so I compiled the list. I converted the frame counts to milliseconds of input lag, and that's what this table is from Warzone 1 and Warzone 2. So you can see the mouse in Warzone 1 was 31.3 milliseconds on average, 32 milliseconds in Warzone 2. So identical there for sure that's within the margin of error uh, the 60 he was 20 milliseconds in warzone 1 and 19.6 in warzone 2 again absolutely the same there for sure within the margin of error um, the xbox one controller this is the like original xbox one controller that it actually has micro usb still so it's a pretty old controller um, the trigger was 24 milliseconds about in warzone 1 and then 28 milliseconds in warzone 2 so that's about one frame slower in warzone 2 um, but again that's most likely within the margin for error. Each one of these is probably about half of a frame of error, I would say. Um, so if both those half of a frame of error stacked up in opposite directions, you'd get about one full frame. And that's about the error we're seeing, seeing here between Warzone 1 and Warzone 2. Stick was even closer, 25 to 27 and a half in Warzone 2. So slow, slightly slower in Warzone 2, but again, most likely just testing error. Uh, Elite Series 2 was the slowest of all the tests for the trigger. So Warzone 1, 37 and a half milliseconds. Very bad input lag there on the trigger in Warzone 1. But then it was a little bit better in Warzone 2. Again, probably just testing error there. Um, about, about 5 milliseconds difference. Um, the stick, so changing your aim or movement. 23.8 in Warzone 1, 26 in Warzone 2. Pretty consistent there. PS5 was basically identical. So 1 millisecond different on trigger. Exactly the same on stick. Um, and then trigger and stick on... Uh, Warzone 2.0, so again, that 4 or 5 millisecond error is in this one as well, I believe, but um, again, if I averaged all these out, all 40 tests I did with the PlayStation 5 overclock from Warzone 1 and Warzone 2 versus the 40 tests that I did with the PS5 controller, you get basically exactly the expected 3 milliseconds of difference, so that was, again, really encouraging to me that uh, the way I'm testing actually is pretty consistent despite seeming pretty rudimentary. All right, that's all I wanted to cover. I really just wanted to go through this. So there's really no difference between Warzone 1 and Warzone 2 in terms of input lag. I was really surprised by the mouse input lag. So I've got a few few other mice that I'm definitely going to test and make a follow-up video about. Um, let me know if you think it's worth it to do the wireless video as well. I wish I had consoles, but I just don't have consoles to do this with, and I can't go buy them right now. Um, I can also test this Thrustmaster controller, and like I said, I'll have a PS4 scuff. Um, with all the bells and whistles that I can test pretty soon. If you'd like to see that as well, just let me know in the comments. I was shocked by the, the mouse results. It was pretty pretty well known already that the Xbox One uh, and the Xbox Elite controllers were a little bit slower than the PS5 controllers. So if you're super, super sweaty and you play on an Xbox controller uh, and you're on PC, most people are probably already on PS5 controllers because they've probably already heard this, but this is a big difference. So like 37 and a half milliseconds of input lag on the trigger versus 21.7 that's that's like a 16 millisecond difference that's absolutely worth trying to make the swap for that's a really big difference in responsiveness of uh the trigger and the controller in general 17 and a half milliseconds of input lag on the stick is crazy that's super super fast even beat the the wu-ting 60he which i did not expect i thought that would be the king of 
of input latency. But yeah, if you guys appreciate all the work I put into this, this took me all day yesterday to get the tests done. Um, be sure to drop a like on the video, a comment, uh, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.